lagoons and pools have all dried up, and the pride is forced to drink of the river. A shallow pool seems safe. But lions aren't the only masters of ambush. Chipotua stands transfixed. Again, her cubs' lives have been threatened by her arch rival. The crocodiles have won the day. The lions won't return. Nightfall. The cue for the lioness is to set off on a hunt. The cubs are too young to go. Chipotua leaves with the hunters, so who's minding the cubs? The lazy sister. She can hear the others enjoying their meal. Her hunger gets the better of her, and she abandons her post. Katwiri sets off for the river, though Chimondo hesitates. The night holds other threats. Hyenas and leopards wouldn't hesitate to kill the cubs. Katsuiri is still thirsty from this morning, but seems reluctant to drink. Both cubs got a big fright at the river, and they seem to understand that these crocodiles mean danger. It's an important lesson they're learning. Fear. They're finally growing up. As weeks pass, the dry season bakes the valley. The shrinking river pulls further away from its banks, exposing large sandy beaches. On one of his marking patrols, Mfum spots the rival pride on a sandbank. It's the first time they've ventured this close to his territory, and it's his first look at the entire pride. The river is still too deep to cross. And this border is safe, but not for long. With four tutors, night school begins in the lion pride. The cub's lesson, hunting. As a team, the sisters drive prey to ambush. 
It's a deadly lottery for the antelope. One evening, the sisters don't kill their quarry. Chipatua summons her cubs for their first look at live game. As always, Katswiri is bolder. But for once, she won't be first. Perhaps Mum wants Chimondo to lead for a change. Adults seldom bring home live prey. To Chimondo, it's just a toy. He's only six months old and won't hunt until he's nearly a year. Katswiri's not tentative and knows exactly what to do. Her brother loiters in the back of the class, but Chipazua knows this lesson is too vital to skip. Lesson over, and the pride feasts together. During hunting class, one teacher was absent. Now they know why. Their cousin rejoins the pride as a mother. Though their father has a favorite, Mfumu mates with all his females. Chimondo and Ketswiri were bound to have cousins. It's a great achievement for the Lagoon Pride, raising two sets of cubs in one year. And Fumu can now boast of a pride of ten. Summertime at Lion Lagoon, and the living is easy. Just weeks old, the new cubs feed solely on milk. Katswiri and Chimondo practice battle techniques. What could tempt a brother to abandon playtime? Mum. A surprise visitor. Buffaloes only journey to the river when the lagoons have all dried up. An opportunity for the lionesses. Chimondo has spoiled the ambush. safer with mom. Another surprise. Who springs to life but the lazy sister? Nice try, but no luck this time.
The lagoon pride will have to be patient. A herd of buffalo is like a fortress, but it has a weak point. Nightfall. As a herd, the buffalo are formidable. Better to separate an individual, and Chipazua is the distraction. The pride takes up the flanks. They need Umfumu's strength for a quick kill, to prevent injury. It's the height of the dry season, and vast areas of the valley floor are barren and lifeless. The clouds building overhead hold no promise of rain. For the first time in years, the natural river boundary disappears. As some leave the Pride's territory, others enter. This is the opportunity the rival has been waiting for. Not even a natural hatred of water can stop him. He fears only crocodiles and drowning, and neither threatens him now. He cautiously announces his arrival. No answer. The rival slips unnoticed into Mfumu's territory. At Lion Lagoon, the rest of the pride is getting to know the new cubs, but they're in peril. <coughs> Male lions live to spread their genes, and the cubs will hinder the rival. If he takes over, he will kill and even eat both sets of cubs. The scent on the ground attracts his attention. Dung from a bull hippo, laced with testosterone which he cannot resist. This pungent fix makes him feel invincible. And caution disappears. Every mother knows the sound of danger. There will be a takeover attempt. And with Mfumu away marking, they must face the menace alone. Somewhere, the intruder lurks. While a sister guards the cubs, the pride braces for a fight. The babysitter turns the tide.
Females are the weaker sex, but in numbers lies the strength of a pride. Yet this battle isn't over. The rival male has survived a rough night, but he's waited a long time for this fight, and it's going to take a lot more to get him back across the river. A new opponent, and Fumu is back. Nothing offends the leader of a pride like the stench of a trespasser. When Mfumu arrives on the bank, the rival has already started to cross. He's too bruised to go another round. But Mfumu is not taking any chances. The rival must never return. A show of force now could prevent a fight later. Reaching the middle of the river, Mfumu issues his final warning. The rival won't be back. The boundary has once again been firmly drawn. Backed by his pride, Mfumu has successfully beaten his river rival. Chipetsua has made a conquest of her own, over her worst fear. Victory over the rival male has stiffened her spine. She's broken the crocodile's spell. Fumu and Chipetsua have a lot to be proud of. The five-year curse is over, and the pride has two sets of cubs to care for. Katsuri and Chimondo are old enough to run with the pride, join the hunt, and tutor their cousins. And Fumu has grown into a confident lion in his prime, and has kept his growing family safe. A brave father, Caring mothers, sturdy youngsters, safe borders. Is this any place to raise a family? Where else? Isolation has provided a paradise, but there is a price to pay, as fortunes change with the annual ebb and flow of the seasons. The Luangwa Valley experiences the most extreme changes in the whole of Africa. In the wet season, the river explodes its banks, creating vast wetlands which gently subside into generous oxbow lakes and lagoons. It's an Eden for grazers and waterborne predators. But lions do not celebrate the rain. Flood water slows their access to food and can be fatal for young cubs. Come the dry season, the lions gain the upper hand. As the water disappears, animals are forced to make daily journeys to the river to drink. Most can 
mute along dried up lagoons. A route closely watched. Lion Lagoon is a favorite place for the females of the pride. Much of their day is spent resting on the soft grass and keeping an eye out for dinner. Resting is a luxury Mfumu can't afford. With ownership comes responsibility. It's his duty to protect his lionesses and guard their territory. To keep it means endless work. Up to 16 kilometers a day patrolling and marking turf. At precise intervals, he sprays his feet and leaves behind powerful pheromones. No entry beacons to rival males. A scent barrier is Mfumu's best defense. Only four years old, he's still too young to face a full-grown male. This weakness has not been overlooked by the rival across the river. An older male, full of strength and envy. Fumu would likely lose if he had to fight. For now, the river boundary averts a showdown. And Fumu resumes his patrol. Every animal within an eight kilometer radius hears his claim. At sunset, it's time for Chipatsua to think about her duty. For the Puku and Impala, the lagoon will soon be transformed into a hunting ground. Theirs is a bond of life and death that has been played out for eons. She bears them no grudge, but there will be a kill tonight. Two younger sisters often hunt with Chipatsua. Together they form the pride's core hunting unit. They know the drill, scout the terrain, and assess the best spot for an ambush. But it will just be two of them tonight. A lazy sister craves her beauty sleep. The dutiful sister targets a puku. Chipatsua knows better. They must wait for the cover of darkness to outwit these agile antelope. Aunt and cousin form the pride's final two members. This mother-daughter team sometimes shares the pride's kill, but they prefer to keep to themselves and hunt on their own. Chipatsua and her sister bide their time. Pursuit is futile. Puku can outrun a lion. Come sundown, excellent night vision will swing the balance in the lioness's favor. It's a waiting game for the Puku. 
The lions work as a team. Chipatsua will chase the Puku towards her sister, waiting in the grass. Patience. An unsuccessful chase wastes energy. The trap is set. It's a perfect ambush. The meal is small, but their aunt and cousin join in. The lazy sister is too late. With no cubs, Chipatsua can be a full-time provider for the pride. And her mate. But Mfumu will not dine tonight. His rivals remain a threat. And an empty belly is a small price to pay. At the height of the dry season, life converges on the valley's sole source of water. The diminishing river. But relief is coming. The wet season is on its way. Chipatsua also comes for a drink. So is her youngest sister. The repeated head rubbing and mock fighting reaffirms their pride membership and their bond as sisters. It's a simple act, but drinking makes Chipatsua uneasy. These waters belong to the crocodiles. The Luangwa attracts the world's largest concentration of crocodiles. With a bite ten times stronger than a shark's, these are the jaws of death. Even when the crocodile is long gone, Chipadzua takes her time. The river is why she has no cubs. Crocodiles have killed her cubs three years in a row. This morning, nature will give Chipatsua another chance. She has come into Estrus, a four-day opportunity for life. Once more, she and Mfumu can try for cubs. For once, sisters aren't welcome. Chipatsua is truly irresistible. Mfumu savors her scent and confirms she's ready to mate. Most females would slap and snarl, but they've shared too much for ritual aggression. Merely a love bite. Mfumu 
will not leave her side for four days. To increase their chances, they'll mate twice an hour, round the clock. Once, they glimpse the rival pride across the river, but their focus is the future of the pride. Even in these parched conditions, the river is high enough to protect them. The threat of invasion will subside when the wet season arrives. But another threat will emerge. Over the next three months, the Luangwa Valley again demonstrates one of its spectacular transformations. Lagoon swaps its dusty brown desert for an abundant lake. In this season of rebirth, the Lagoon Pride has something to celebrate. <laughs> Two cubs, a typical litter. Newborns are prey to hyenas and jackals. Chibadzua will keep close by or will hide them while hunting. Fumu is aware of the birth, but will not take an interest until the cubs are old enough to join the pride, if they live. Only one newborn in four survives the wet season. The rains end, but the landscape is completely changed. Pathways vanish. It's wet underfoot, and the lions make long detours to their hunting grounds. Other predators welcome change. Their once narrow habitat now engulfs the land. They can look forward to many new opportunities. Left alone, the cubs stray into unfamiliar terrain. Lions are born to explore, but curiosity can kill a cat. Just weeks old, Katsuri is a novice to danger. Her timid brother, Chimondo, at last joins her, and Katsuri leads the way into peril. Across the lagoon, Chipatsue is cut off. To save her cubs, she must face her worst fear, the water.
suddenly a familiar sound, and mother and cubs are reunited. It's a narrow escape, and not the last. For more than a year, cubs depend on their mothers. Each time Chipatsua leaves to hunt, she puts them at risk. This cycle of life and death must be broken. The cubs reach a milestone. After six weeks, they're strong enough to keep up with their mother. Finding another den might keep them safe for a while, but instinct is guiding Chipatsua in another direction. For Chimondo and Katsuiri, the world is new. Katsuiri means the clever one. Wrong prey, but right instincts. Chipatsua has made a big decision. It's time to meet the pride. The cubs are left alone to make a good impression. They seek one member's approval above all. Chimondo and Katsuiri have never seen a male lion. Instinctively, they show caution and respect. And Fumo gets his first look at his cubs. But as their father, he won't show affection. His tolerance indicates their acceptance as full members of the pride. Mature males resent younger rivals. Chimondo is no threat now. But at sexual maturity, he'll be exiled. Chipatua can relax at last. With so many guardians, the odds of survival have just risen. This personal time with Chipatua will not last long. The cubs will nurse up to seven months, but now they're ready for meat. Chipatua can hear there's been a kill. She's hungry. It's been a long time since she's eaten. First, every parent struggle. Putting the kids to bed. finally surrenders. Katsuiri reluctantly follows. Now, a midnight snack. Tonight, it's not the lionesses that have made the kill. Mfumu has caught an appetizing impala. This meal will need different tactics.
seldom does a male surrender a meal to a mate. charm has won her a rare feast. Back home, Chipatua is greeted with an empty den. When she finds Chimondo, he is alone. From his scent, she can tell he's unharmed. Katsuiri is nowhere close. Chipatua can hear her daughter, but it's not going to be easy getting to her. Katsuiri needs her help. It's not a graceful rescue, but Katsuri is down. Chipatua can smell that Katsuri has had quite a jolt. Katsuri is a bit dazed and wobbly on her feet. But Chipatua moves them back to the den. The evening could have ended in tragedy. Chipatua must do a lot more to protect her cubs. Pride life has changed completely with this energetic duo around. The cubs brim with energy, and now with character. Katsuri never sits still, always after the next adventure, eager to learn and experience more. Chimondo is a mama's boy. Through harmless play, both are learning necessary skills to become hunters. As they grow over the next three months, Chimondo and Katsuri inject new life into the pride.